The nostalgia surrounding Golden Sun is undeniably fervent. If you were there for the Game Boy Advance, this was likely one of the most influential games of your childhood, and that love has developed into a longing as fans are still hoping that someday the series could continue. Whether that actually happens or not is up in the air, but how did Camelot, a developer still mainly known for sports titles, come to create this RPG trilogy? Well, it's because RPGs were where they got their start. It all begins with Hiroyuki Takahashi, who began his career in television production before joining Enix with Dragon Quest III. There, he mainly focused on the promotion and advertising of the game, at least officially. Like many, he had grown to love the series, and with this unique opportunity to work on Dragon Quest, he decided to create an extremely detailed notebook of every line of dialogue within Dragon Quest III. He even went so far as to annotate them into a flowchart to show how everything was connected and easily see whether there was enough hints and clues on how to complete each quest. This not only ended up being a significant aid to the development team, but gave him the opportunity to more directly work on Dragon Quest IV as an assistant producer. When development on Dragon Quest IV finished, Hiroyuki and his brother Shugo decided to leave Enix and approach Sega to create their own development studio. Thus, Sega Consumer Development Studio No. 4 was founded in 1990, with Hiroyuki and Shugo serving as president and vice president respectively. It wasn't long until their name was changed to Sonic Software Planning, and work began on their first game. But the budget Sega allocated was extremely tight, meaning that Hiroyuki, in addition to writing the story, ended up doing the bulk of the work outside of programming and graphics. That was handled by another small developer that helped co-develop the project, Climax Entertainment. Together, they created their own RPG, Shining in the Darkness, one of the first RPGs released for Sega's Genesis console. The game became a critical and commercial success and kickstarted the Shining series, which would be their main output until 1995, totaling eight games up until that point. That was when the Takahashi brothers decided to separate from Sega and change their name once again to Camelot Software Planning. And while they were free agents, they had agreed to continue developing Shining games on the condition that they wouldn't release any games on rival systems that would threaten the success of the franchise. To that end, they developed Beyond the Beyond, the first traditional JRPG released for the original PlayStation. However, the game was met with a tepid response as many found the story dull, the combat uninteresting, and the graphics dated. Combat did feature timing attacks like those in Paper Mario, but it wasn't enough to salvage it for critics. However, the music was composed by Motui Sakuraba, who had previously worked on Tales of Fantasia and the original Star Ocean. He would stay associated with those series and continue to compose for many of Camelot's games, including Golden Sun and the Mario sports titles. Before Mario, though, Camelot developed one more game for the PlayStation, Everybody's Golf, or as it's known in North America, Hot Shots Golf. While it kicked off the franchise thanks to its surprisingly addictive gameplay, this first game would be the only one developed by Camelot. Instead, after the release of Shining Force 3 in 1998, Camelot decided to break ties with Sega completely and approach Nintendo as a developer. And thanks to their experience with Everybody's Golf, they ended up developing Mario Golf for the Nintendo 64 and Game Boy Color in 1999, with Mario Tennis coming to the same systems a year later. To this day, Camelot has developed every entry in both series, which is why they have become mainly known as sports developers. While working on all these games, the Takahashi brothers had also been planning an RPG for roughly five years, the game that would become Golden Sun. One of Hiroyuki's goals was to allow players to use their special abilities both in and out of battle, as up to this point, most RPGs had characters that could perform amazing feats, but only in a fight. Although it's been said that this RPG was originally intended as a Nintendo 64 game, a developer interview with the brothers declared that completely untrue. They were making an RPG for the system, but shelved it when word of the next system began to surface. That's why they decided to make the sports games, as it would be a less intensive investment. And they've clarified that none of that N64 RPG ended up in Golden Sun. The Game Boy Advance was chosen because it had become ready for development proposals while they worked on Mario Golf and Mario Tennis. Seeing an opportunity to stand out on a new system, the Takahashis began solidifying their ideas for Golden Sun and prototyping what was possible on the handheld. That took roughly six months, while development itself lasted around a year, a massive amount of time for handheld games of that era. And that's because the planned story was likely to reach 100 hours, too long for a handheld game and too ambitious for the GBA cart. 
but it was always their plan to shift the character viewpoint in the second half, so it made for a convenient place to end the first game. So what was this idea the brothers had for so long actually like? Golden Sun takes place in the world of Weyard, where the power of alchemy once allowed nations to thrive before they devolved into a world war. It was decided to seal alchemy away with the keys to restoring it hidden deep within Mount Aleph. And yet, there were rare examples of people still being able to use alchemy and the four elements it governed – earth, water, air, and fire. These special few are known as adepts. Hundreds of years later, two adepts attempt to infiltrate Mount Aleph and instead trigger traps that unleash a powerful thunderstorm upon the village of Vale, who sought to protect the mountain. It's here that the main character Isaac becomes involved as he and his friend Garrett spot the adepts and are powerless to stop them despite having powers of their own. In the chaos, many in the village die including their friend Jenna's parents and brother Felix. Three years later, the two adepts try again and this time succeed, revealing that Felix is still alive and actually working with them. They then steal three of the four keys, kidnap Jenna, and leave to use the keys on the four lighthouses found throughout Weyard. Now Isaac and Garrett, along with two more adepts they find along the way, must give chase before these villains can bring alchemy back for good. It's a solid, if well-worn, setup, but the gameplay is what captured players' imaginations, specifically the implementation of Synergy, Golden Sun's magic system. Each party member is affiliated with one of the elements, and each allows for specific spells. And these spells are highly encouraged to be used as a character's MP refills when walking around. Camelot didn't want players to feel like they had to be conservative and hold back from their more powerful abilities like in other RPGs. It also ties into the goal of having players use synergy outside of battle. While most are dedicated solely to utility, there are some that can be used in battle as well. In general, the utility synergy ranges from moving rocks, lifting objects, turning invisible, growing vines, and reading minds. Some are naturally learned by certain characters, while others are granted with special items. Then there are those who have to be discovered by equipping Jin. The Jin are creatures that can increase the power of an adept when set to them. There are seven Jin for each element, though they must be found by exploring the world as they were scattered by the eruption of Mount Aleph. Some join automatically, while others must be defeated before they become part of the team. By setting them to a character, they increase that character's stats and unlock even more powerful synergy to use in battle. Generally, it's a good idea to equip the Earth Jin to an Earth Adept, as it simply makes them more powerful, but it is possible to mix and match the Jin to create entirely different classes. They may not be as strong, but unique utility synergy becomes available along with different strategies in battle. However, the Jin go beyond boosting abilities, as they each have a power that can help the party whether that's dealing extra damage, boosting defense, or impeding the enemy. Jin cost no MP to use, but they do go into standby where their stat boosts no longer help that character. While it may seem like a detriment, this is the next step in unleashing a summon that does massive damage to the enemy. The more Jin of the same element are in standby, the more powerful the summon, up to 4 in total. After being used as a summon, the Jin will go into recovery mode for a short time before being automatically set to their character again, allowing the process to restart. This often makes battles dynamic and flashy, but the overworld is just as emphasized thanks to synergy. Many of the dungeons require quite a bit of puzzle solving, and even the main story requires synergy at points. It helps give Golden Sun a different feel to many other RPGs of the time. And with the world completely open to explore, it's possible to return to past locations with new synergy in order to open paths that were inaccessible before. Of course, that also means dealing with more of the random battles. The game became a solid success, selling 740,000 copies in the United States alone by 2008 and another 340,000 in Japan. Critics effused their praises as well, specifically citing its graphical style and particle effects in battle. The sweeping camera and flashy spells gave it a cinematic look that impressed many. Likewise, the music and battle system were seen as entertaining and fun, starting simple and showing their depth as time went on. Some did complain that the story was unoriginal with far too much text repeating much of the same information. Others disliked that party members would go into a defensive position if the enemy they were attacking was defeated before their turn. Still, it was seen as the best original RPG for the Game Boy Advance at the time and continues to rank highly on RPG lists and even the best Nintendo games of all time. And then, one year later in 2002, the sequel was released to finish the tale of alchemy.
like the Takahashi brothers promised, the perspective of Golden Sun The Lost Age shifted from Isaac to his friend Jenna's brother, Felix. While Isaac had succeeded in installing Felix's group, they were still determined to bring back alchemy by igniting all the lighthouses. But this time, players learned their reasons for doing so. Because The Lost Age is more of a continuation than a sequel, not much has changed between the two games. The basic idea of using synergy to both battle and solve puzzles is present, but the systems have been expanded. Eleven new Jin for each element are available to find, and each summon from the first game returns. However, there are also 13 new summons that can become available after finding special stone tablets. These are accomplished by mixing and matching the amount of different Jin elements. Finally, it is possible to connect the two games if the player has a clear data save on the cartridge. By using a link cable or password, the character levels, Jin, synergy items, stats, gold, equipment, and even story elements are remembered for certain points in the Lost Ages story. However, if a link cable is not available, the password system is notoriously long if the player wants to transfer everything, requiring 260 characters. Fortunately, there are shorter options that bring over less data. Overall, The Lost Age sold and reviewed slightly less well than the original, with many reviewers citing that few of the criticisms of the first game were changed. But there were some improvements, with this continuation having slightly upgraded graphics and more complex puzzles. The story was again seen as mostly unoriginal, but many found that the game was still one of the best RPGs on the Game Boy Advance. It was undoubtedly a fan favorite, with many hoping that a third game would come in due time. Instead, it took nearly seven years for any sign of a sequel to appear. Rumors were naturally persistent, with only snippets of information coming out in the intervening time. In 2003, Camelot stated that the status of a third game was up in the air, while a 2004 interview with the Takahashi brothers said that the first two games were merely a prologue to the true crux of the story. And then a 2007 interview with the brothers revealed that Nintendo had asked them to make another game. So finally, at E3 2009, Golden Sun DS was revealed with a 2010 release window. But why did it take so long? Well, the team was simply burnt out after the marathon that was the first two games' development. Golden Sun always had long development cycles despite being handheld releases, and the third game was no exception. But with a larger team, planning went smoother and they were even able to visit certain parts of the world for inspiration in its development. Unfortunately, little has been said about what else went into the development, but the game did meet its planned 2010 release date, coming out in Japan in October and the rest of the world by December. Golden Sun Dark Dawn picks up 30 years after the events of The Lost Age, with the world still adapting to that game's conclusion. Not everything is at peace though, as strange synergy vortexes have been appearing across the world, sucking the elemental energy from both the land and adepts. The story focuses on Isaac's son Matthew and his encounter with three mysterious adepts, who may know more about the vortexes. He sets out with his friends, the children of the previous game's protagonists, to pursue these adepts and learn the origin of the vortexes. Naturally, something far grander awaits them in their travels. The gameplay of Dark Dawn is mostly the same as its predecessors, with each character affiliated with an element and gaining access to new synergy as time goes on. But there are some quality of life improvements, such as stylus control for puzzles, making them much easier to manipulate. The party mostly plays the same as before, with one exception, as a new character uses a new class that allows them to shift between forms, changing their commands in battle. The returning classes have seen a few tweaks and shifts, while there are four new single element classes and two new dual element classes. The Jin return as well, with 72 available in total, 18 for each class. And while some are the same as the original games, there are brand new ones as well. The Jin system remains unchanged, though there are cosmetic differences as each Jin has a different design, even within the same element. The 29 possible summons of the Lost Age are all back, with some seeing a redesign and a brand new one introduced to bring the total to an even 30. Otherwise, equipment has been tweaked and revised to trim the fat of the previous games and make certain types more useful. Battles remain the same, except Dark Dawn introduces a smart targeting system so that characters no longer default to defend if the monster they're attacking is defeated before their turn. Finally, there's an encyclopedia that provides background details on characters, terms, and history from the previous games. While it can be brought up at any time, certain text is highlighted during conversations that indicate when an encyclopedia entry could elaborate. If it's already been read, then the highlight will be dulled. While critics praise the new 3D graphics, the returning Jin system, and the puzzles, Dark Dawn still reviewed lower than its predecessors. 
many felt the game was dated with too little change in the long gap between games. In the same way, the dialogue was overly long and the battles were far too easy, making it all feel a little dull to some. North American sales data was never officially released, but Dark Dawn failed to make an impact in most territories, ranking 5th in sales for its first week in Japan and 23rd amongst DS games in the UK. As of 2012, it only sold 80,000 copies in Japan. And outside of some cameos from Isaac in Super Smash Bros., there's been no word of anything related to Golden Sun. It's a shame too as Dark Dawn does wrap up its story, but ends with a hook for a sequel, indicating that there's still plenty more to see of this world. Camelot has only released Mario Sports titles since this game, with many fans still hoping for a sequel. Whether that actually happens is anyone's guess, but Golden Sun stands as one of the most prominent entry-level RPGs. It's why it's so beloved to so many, and why the first two games have been re-released when possible with the original even planned for the NSO's Game Boy Advance service. And yet, Dark Dawn was never released on the DS Virtual Console that was made available for the Wii U. It's always possible that the games could see a renaissance and a new game could come eventually, but for now, we have to make do with the re-releases and the hope that a new generation takes to the series. Golden Sun could still shine bright. Thank you all for joining me for this shorter retrospective. I hope to supplement the longer series with looks at the development of smaller franchises, as there are so many fascinating stories to reveal. But, as always, I'd love to hear more from you. What's your history with Golden Sun? Have you played all the games? Or will the coming re-release be your first time? And if you enjoyed this retrospective, I also released one on the entire Shimigami Tensei franchise, as well as the Zeno series of games. There's plenty more planned for the future, so if you enjoyed these, let me know what other series you'd like to see covered. And make sure not to miss them by subscribing to Good Vibes Gaming, hitting the like button, and ringing that bell. We also have a Patreon over at patreon.com slash dvgaming with plenty of extra perks. Until next time, bye.